We at this conference presented for the first time a randomized phase-free trial where Bluntimab was compared to standard chemotherapy in patients with relapse or refractory B precursor ALL. And can you tell us more about that trial and the comparisons that you were making? Right. So the trial was performed uh, to confirm uh, our first uh, phase two trial in ALL, where we saw that 43% of these patients can respond to immunotherapy reaching a complete remission. So the aim of the trial was to compare if Belintimumab um, can result in an overall survival benefit for patients when compared to standard chemotherapy. The chemotherapy that was chosen reflects um, the standard therapies that are used for these patients and are usually quite intense chemotherapy for those patients. Okay, and what kind of results did you find from the trial? Well, the primary endpoint of the trial was to demonstrate overall survival benefit for those patients. So, standard chemotherapy leads to an overall survival of about 4.0 months in this clinical trial, whereas in patients treated with map, the survival was almost doubled to 7.7 .7 months. Um, this also was clearly shown that the complete remission rate in the patient cohort was almost double for the patients who were treated with lintomap when you compare that to standard chemotherapy and also the depth of the response, the MRD response, was clearly much more enhanced in patients being treated with lintomap. And how can these results be brought forward to people working in the clinic? Well, obviously, uh, this will first help uh, to set the stage that map is actually available for patients. Um, map has just very recently been approved by the European Medical Agency, and now the drug is now being rolled out to be approved in every other country, the UK, for example, Germany, France, Italy, with now a phase-free randomized trial demonstrating overall survival benefit for the first time for an immunotherapy agent in this patient cohort really will obviously uh, convince regulators but also doctors to use this drug more broadly. And do you think it has any wide applications for different patient cohorts? Well, it definitely does. I mean, obviously, this is sort of the worst of the worst. You're talking about relapsed refractory ALL patients also selected for negative prognostic factors. Um, and to show that patient population that map is leading to overall survival benefit will lead to more investigations if map can be incorporated into frontline therapy. And actually that is happening because we already have performed a phase two trial in patients with minimal residual disease. Minimal residual disease means that after you do standard chemotherapy, you still find a clone that is still detectable by uh, PCR technology. And we know that those patients, normally speaking, will be relapsing in about 95% of the cases. So we already have done blintomap in those patients too, leading to a result of converting MRD positivity into MRD negativity in those patients. And also have shown that those patients actually do do much better than patients who actually weren't treated with blintomap. So in summary, we have now a lot of evidence that actually integrating Bluntumab in frontline therapies is advantageous. And these clinical trials will be performed in different in the study groups throughout Europe and in the world. Okay, well that's all I have to ask. Is there anything that you would like to add? Well, uh, I think uh, you always have to look at the efficacy of a drug, but you also have to balance it to the side effects. So chemotherapy usually leads to infectious complications, to death, to neutropenia in those patients. Um, Blintumab in this clinical trial demonstrated that the rate of severe infections as well as severe neutropenias was clearly reduced in those patients. Um, Blintumab, as many a new immunotherapy agents, has some also novel toxicities. So in the phase two trials, uh, Blintumab led to neuro events in neurotoxicity in about 14% of the cases, which meant the patients had to interrupt treatment. In this clinical trial, there were two observations that we made. A, the rate of uh, 
neurotoxicity was reduced to 8%. So this may be due to better managing the patients. And B, chemotherapy itself also had the same rate. So that was a very surprise to us to actually see that the toxicity that we felt was dose limiting for blintumab is actually not any way different to what we know from chemotherapy. And the second key thing is that as it is immunotherapy, cytokine release syndrome has been shown to be a part of uh, the toxicity profile of immunotherapy. So with blintumab, uh, it's only about 4% of the patients um, who actually have severe uh, cytokine release syndrome. When you compare that to other immunotherapy agents, which are now being discussed heavily, also at this conference, there's a quote, CART technology, where you have toxicity with cytokine release syndrome in the range of about 30%. Grade three, grade four cytokine release syndrome, patients go into an ICU, blintumab, doesn't have anything like that. So that's the second key message, apart from also demonstrating overall survival benefit, it's also that the toxicity profile is in favor of this new agent.